So this is like a typical, this is kind of a, we would call it a factoid question. You know, it's basic fact. Do you know what you're talking about? Okay. And everybody should know the answer to that, right? It's a, all preganglionic fibers uh, of the autonomic system used in neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Okay. Those are preganglionic, postganglionic, and autonomic systems are different, right? Right? The parasympathetic and sympathetic, right? Everybody remember all that? You better. <laughs> uh, this is another kind of, um, uh, this is just a simple factoid. These are sample questions that they have in their little brochure to show you. Um, okay, monoam monoamine oxidase inhibitors produce effects by inhibiting the reuptake of norepinephrine, inhibiting the degradation of norepinephrine, inhibiting the reuptake of acetylcholine decreasing the amount of norepinephrine available at the synapse. So now see this, these, all three of these, they're, you know, they're lined up, they've got nice stems, they're almost equal length, and then you have this down here. So some people would be fooled and want to pick that, I don't know why, okay, because the answer's up here, number A, okay? Everybody sees that? Good. They're all in agreement, right? Okay. This is a no duh <laughs> for me, because if you hear grapefruit, you probably heard about grapefruit being bad uh, to take when you're taking a substance because of the interaction, right? Everybody's heard that, right? Uh, so whenever they say grapefruit might, you know, you, you, you're going to want to check grapefruit, okay? Because that's clearly a potential problem. Now the problem isn't as they depict it, because it depends on when you drink the grapefruit juice. Remember, this is people don't just continuously drink grapefruit juice while they're taking medication. It would be when they take their medication, they might use that to swallow that medication. So that would be a problematic. But if the person had drank some grapefruit juice, let's say an hour ago, would you say that they could take their drug or not? Yeah, they could take it. Or how long would you want to get the reverse? How long if the person had some grapefruit juice earlier? That day, let's say it was 30 minutes before you took your medication, would that be okay? Meaning, possibly, you got to, they're not going to ask that detail of a question, okay? That's not going to happen to you. That's another thing. The, they don't hit you a lot with the dosages of drugs, okay? They do more of these kind of conceptual things. You know? Is this going to be a problem? Okay. Yeah, time in the stomach, but remember it's going to go into the duodenum pretty quickly because it's a liquid. It'll pass through. But it's something you want to think about. And that's the, that's the beauty of doing a lot of questions because now you're going to start to try to reason, you know, and as you, as you go through these questions, it's, your, things are going to be retained because there's only so much you can ask. Here's a seven, seven, eight. Now this is more like the kind of question that you're going to see. Okay, that you'll puzzle with. A 70-year-old female patient reports feelings of tension and excessive worry. She has a history of osteoporosis. Okay, that may be important, may not be. Reduced renal clearance may be important, may not be. Mild COPD may be important, may not be. And hypertension. Hepatic function is otherwise normal. Which of the following medications would be most appropriate. Now they're not asking you whether you think it's a good idea to take a benzodiazepine. They're asking you which one if you had to choose among these. Okay, you're going along with the lot thing. Uh, everybody remembers what lot is: lorazepam, oxazepam, and temazepam. And they are what? What? What's unique about lot? Essentially, it's liver friendly to. They're benzodiazepine, and it's liver uh, friendly. So you don't require that type of great metabolism, right? But what are the risk factors for this patient? What is the risk factor for any, any, any kind of a benzodiazepine for a 71-year-old female? What's the risk factor? Falls, falling, falls. Okay. So what determines, what determines which drug, if you say, okay, falls might be the greatest risk with this person, okay? What would determine your choice? The shorter acting, PEP-8, shorter acting, better. Okay, so which one is the shortest acting? D. D, absolutely. But 
that wouldn't be something you would be thinking about, right? Most people get, I'm not going to give out prize, you know, prize well, you know, because you hear all this addiction stuff. Well, that's not a big issue typically with a 71 year old unless you're giving them too much anyway. But that the idea is that these that this stuff accumulates in the body, especially as you get older and you have more fat, right? With that accumulation, there becomes an increasing risk of fall. Since you know, if you look at this one, it has to be metabolized by the liver, but the, the liver is fine. There's no big issue there, right? This one doesn't, okay? But we don't care because the person has normal hepatic function anyway. What does hypertension have to do with this? Nothing, okay? Little uh, reduced renal clearance. Most elderly people have that. That's not a big deal. Mild COPD, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that's not a big deal. Usually, unless you're going to give them large doses, which could decrease their, their breathing, which more, would more likely happen with long-acting drugs that were given over a long period of time. Uh, a 45-year-old female on an inpatient unit who has been recently treated with haloperidol develops hyperthermia, rapid heart rate, pallor, and muscular rigidity. These symptoms most likely indicate the onset of spinal meningitis. Uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome and agranulocytosis, a condition unrelated to the medication. Everybody picks up on that. Nobody's having any trouble with that. Right? The double blind placebo controlled design psychopharmacology research has been criticized because reports of side effects may clue clinicians into the experimental status of the patient. Placebos are too variable in the effects they produce. Clinicians may subtly convey to their patients their expectations for improvement depending on whether the patient is receiving the experimental drug or the placebo. Patients become aware of their experimental status because placebos have no side effects. Well, we know that last one's crazy. All right, so why is D not correct? Why would you say D can't possibly be correct? Everything has side effects. Thank you, number six. <laughs> That's crazy to say placebos have no side effects. Of course they do. That's what the comparison is. So when when you have package inserts and you're, you're kind of giving a patient a medication and you have a package insert, you know the PDR is nothing but the package inserts. I hope you all know that by now. But in any event, the, the package insert for the drug will have the placebo study stuff in there with them. And I use that as a time to educate a patient about placebos because I'll, I'll say, okay, here's how we know which side effects we need to pay attention to. We have people taking the medication and people taking the sugar pill that has no active ingredient in it, and we call that a placebo. And you'll see if we look at the line that says headaches, 10% of the people on the medication complained of a headache and 6% complained of a headache on the placebo. The thing about side effects is any time during the study they complain of the symptom. Because they use that as the standard, it becomes very difficult to see which ones come on early, which ones come on late, which ones seem to fade away quickly, and which ones don't. So we're kind of missing that information. We don't get it. What we get is if this was reported across the study. So the answer is supposed to be that. That's what they said in their little chart. OK, everybody in agreement with that? A or B? It's A. That's what they're saying is the answer, the best answer.